Media. This is one of the most special video interactions that we are doing since COVID-19 affected us all. All this while we've been talking about growth, degrowth, economy, viewership, etc. But today our interaction is much above all of this. It is a story of an industry veteran who has yet again inspired us by giving a very tough fight to coronavirus and coming back even stronger. Welcome to the show, Mr. Lola. I'm so happy to see you. My privilege and my pleasure. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, I mean, I, I learned it from Instagram and I was like really, really taken aback. And uh, just if you can uh, take us through the journey, you know, how did it happen? What uh, how, what symptoms you got? And uh, the first reaction to, you know, finding out that you have a virus like Corona. So, uh, I think it was on June 10th that I first got uh, a mild temperature. And then it came back on June 14th. 18th. It came on. It came and it went away. Yeah, it came and it went away. Okay. But uh, it came again on the 14th. By then, I knew there was a problem because my body was not working the way it normally does. Right? It wasn't as energized. I had to curtail my exercise and curtail everything else. Uh, I was anyway. We were all work from home, and we had opened up the office on the 10th. But I had decided we would go a week later. Uh, and uh, I did not go to work in any case. Uh, and uh, I was more convinced I had COVID than my doctors. My doctors felt, no, this can't be true because I don't have the classic symptoms that many other people claim to have. On the 20th of June, I went to the to Bridge Candy Hospital to get a check. And from that day onwards, they had told me I had to be. 10 days later, 10th June, you got your first fever. Yeah. 10 yeah. days later. And in, in between, you got. Fever one more time. Got fever three times. Three times. And how high was the temperature? Always 9900, variating in between. Yeah. And I didn't have any other symptoms that people have spoken about. You know, loss of taste, diarrhea, etc. Shortness I, of breath and all. My O2 was lower than what it normally is, but it was not at an alarm bell level. You were monitoring your O2. Yeah. I, so, uh, and I think that as a long distance runner, I monitor my O2 more often than most average people do. Right. So, uh, on the 20th, I went for a test. 22nd, I got a call from the BMC. And I, the thing I want to share about is really the efficiency of the BMC. Okay, they called me at 8.14 in the morning. I remember that. Uh, to tell me that, you know, I have tested positive. They verify who I am. Then they tell me I've tested positive. They verify that I had chosen the option for home quarantine. Right? And in about three minutes from there, the status on my Arogya Setu app changed to tested positive. They came to the building, they came to the apartment, they put a notice out there, it's the standard procedure. They spoke to the secretary and chairman of the society, they spoke to the other household members. Then they came later and did sanitization. Uh, they called two or three times after that to make sure my health was okay. Uh, the Arogya Setu helpline called two or three times to check if I was exercising, if I was keeping well, I needed any help. So I think on an overall basis, that experience of, I would say, is remote touch, right, through technology, and them being very sensitive is highly appreciated. We read many stories, and I'm not saying that those stories may not be true, but I think having paid taxes for more than 35 years, I'm glad I've been paying my taxes. I got the full vasul on my taxes in this period, right? They have gone out of their way to look after me. I called them a day before I was to be uh, remove from uh, go out of quarantine and they said yes tomorrow we will come to your house and they came promptly at 11 o'clock as they said they changed the, the the safeguards and they knew i had called earlier they told me that we know you have called before and inquired as to what your date is so they they really keep a good track and i think you we i chose home quarantine because i did not have any severity of illness no comor comorbidity so i did not need to go into a hospital and all I did was I lived in my little room. So in, in uh, after you tested positive, you didn't get fever again? I did for one day, but after that for like 14 and days. And it remained 9900. Yeah, and it never went. And after that 14 days, I was fine. So the, the thing is, I've stayed in one room. Uh, I've operated from one room. I've lived, eaten, done everything over here, washed my own dishes, done all of that from one room. So it creates anxiety around everybody right because people get nervous and therefore i always believe that you should speak about it and not hide it and you should be open about it 
right so that you can this is one of the reasons why we are doing i have a i have an entire question on mental health uh, sure. in covid uh, but you know uh, i i also want to uh, ask you that in the te- like from june 10 to june, june 20 uh, when you were not sure whether you have covid or not you must be uh, interacting with other family members i was and i did not step out of my house i stayed in my but house we, but there are people so the living in the we, house with you my wife two staff members they have stayed in the house they have also they been under they didn't they have, test positive no and they have also been under quarantine okay I, but 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 the stories that we hear that it spreads so easily but you know there was a positive member but it didn't not necessary so the okay. second i tested myself i made sure that if anyone came next to me in the household also they were wearing a mask right so i think i did not expect to have covid because i am not somebody who's gone out there run done things if even if i went i only went to two places i went to the chemist and i went to the provision store those are the only two places i was to go to and all i did was wear a mask wash my hands sanitized yeah, yeah. could you could you recollect how and when you could have no. got it i think it is impossible for anyone to know so when we hear about the cluster spread we know that somebody who had covid has gone into a group of people and it spread to the entire group right otherwise it's a very hard case for anyone to tell you it could have been an accidental brush in a store i think her video has paused it could be an accidental brush with anybody it could be passing by in a store it could be anywhere any time so it could have been an accidental brush in a store somebody could have had it could be somebody on the road could be anything so uh, yeah okay what first th- i mean when you you were called and you were told that i'm positive how did it affect you mentally more than physically i i anticipated when i went for the test that i would test positive frankly right i just said that fine if i get it it's okay i i had already made arrangements to self quarantine myself so the only thing was i had to plan my day smartly because now i had to do everything myself right i had to wash my clothes do my dishes put them in and out do all of that clean my room so and i continue to work through that period so whenever i didn't have the energy or i felt tired i went i lay down I continue to work. I continue to do what I needed to do. I the only change I made is that I started doing breathing classes for 30 minutes every day. Because you need your lungs to be strong, and I need to recover that. So the last time I ran on the road was 14th of March. I remember that, right? So it's been a long time. I got out of my of my house yesterday for the first time to walk on my terrace, which was 30 days after I first got fever. and uh, you've had your second test also which has you come out to be negative you don't need to do a second test now you don't need to no okay. so see i think what's happened is through the through the uh, period of the virus from january to now there is a lot of learning and relearning and obviously our testing facilities and our hospitals are full up in every city in every town so they don't need to burden if you run 10 days without fever you don't need to do a test so It, if it gets into senior people who have comorbidities or happens during a surgery i from what i read and i know and the people i know who passed pass that's a risk but otherwise you i know five other people in my family three of my cousins got it we don't live together we have not met in the last four months right or just as a as a as a fact that four of us had it at the same time uh and all of us are in recovery mode or some of us have recovered and it moves on you know what I, the kind of conversations you were having with your family were you giving them assurance or were they giving you assurance my, my wife has been extremely supportive and uh, she never doubted for a moment that i will not recover uh, the staff were very supportive they could not leave the house but they were very supportive uh, until you test yourself so one of the things about testing also is if you test yourself too early you may not it may not get picked up it will give you a false assurance false feeling that you are fine so which is why doctors like to wait before they test right yes i got lots of interesting questions how can i not know who gave it to me how can i not know what moment i came you know this is not a, a dog bite that comes and you can see the dog and you can get bitten right this is a virus it comes in it gets into your system i think the protocols that the bmc has done in bombay or the government has done in general are are good protocols they have everybody safety right and i guess like 
washing hands, which should have been a natural phenomenon now, is is something you don't forget. And wearing a mask is a new wardrobe item that we all need. And I have a collection of them. <laughs> Great. We would like to see some of them uh, maybe in the next video that we do with you. Sure. So uh, uh, now that a lot of people are moving out, your office is also open. Yeah. What are the kind of suggestions you want to give to people? So see, when even when we were planning to open our office, we ran through many protocols and drills. And eventually, before we opened, we got the whole place thoroughly cleaned. I got the same done in my house. I got a full sanitation done because I didn't want anyone to have a fear that there was a residue of a virus left in my apartment. It's not. It doesn't stay like this, right? And a lot of it is misinformation. So in our office too, we have followed the same protocol, a minimum of six feet top distance. We actually keep more than that, right? Uh, we follow the protocol of only X number of people, which is defined by the government. So despite the fact that as a media, as a part of essential service, we could do 100% occupancy, we chose not to do so. And we only said people who can come to the office in their own transport or if they are getting a Uber or, you know, any other transport to come. Otherwise, not to take the risk. I think the important thing is so, you know, we have to release the currency data every every week, right? And I don't think in all our contingency planning, we would have envisaged that the day will come when we will have to switch out so fast. And when we decided to switch off, the only thing I checked is whether we could manage. And in so not everybody may have had a, a reliable internet connection. In 48 hours, we made sure everybody did, right? And remotely, we could fix people's laptops. We made sure all our panel homes were safe. We made sure our panel homes are working and we could monitor. So I think there's a lesson out of this is it's not a very healthy lesson from a sociological point of view, but we could operate without a physical structure. Yes. Right. So, that's irrelevant because the social structure actually brings in a lot of the chemistry and a lot of the interaction at a very different level, right? The physicality, right? And Bombay is a big base for us. Most out of 270 odd employees, 200 sit here. So it's a big base for us. So you, you're a man of numbers. You give us so many numbers every week. I am interested in a very different kind of a number today. What is your age? 59. 59. So, I mean, they've been, because a lot of uh, conversations are around, you know, the 60 plus people are actually more vulnerable. When so, I'm 60 plus, I'm going to run the next full marathon, which is next. <laughs> no, I'm talking about COVID-19. You, we are sure that you're going to run many, mar many marathons in a lot of uh, years to uh, come. Sir, thank you very much. Anything else you would want to add on coronavirus? So I think that you know there should be no stigma about it. Yeah. You know, and I think it happens a lot because so, you know, the people who come to take garbage, we had to educate them that nothing is going to happen to you if you visit the floor or you come and pick up the garbage you just kept down, right? There's a lot of apprehension, and you don't, especially within a family, it's really important for the family to continue to express confidence and love and togetherness, right? It may spread within a family. I know quite a few families where all four members or all five members may have got it, right? You can fight this. There is a, you have to be alert that you check your oxygen, you check your parameters. I kept a book, I record everything every day, okay. right? So that I can check my parameters and you need to now, Monday is over, today's Friday of the week, right? It was on Monday that I got taken out of quarantine. But I will continue to be very vigilant and, and careful for many weeks to come because you need to recover fully, right? The good part is if somebody is in trouble, I intend to donate, donate my blood because it's got the COVID positive plasma as immunity for that person to help that person recover. I just think live your life normally. Don't get scared. Don't do foolish things and don't break the rules that the government has put out there. Thank you so much, sir. It's so inspiring and uh, so much we have learned about it today. I mean, I, I really need to uh, make notes and I, I have just recently traveled. I mean, I should also be a little careful. Sir, uh, thank you very much for uh, doing this conversation with us and uh, stay at home for more weeks now and stay safe and take care of yourself. We are genuinely very, very happy to see you back and you look pretty fresh and uh, healthy right now. I mean, from the last interview that I saw uh, was with India Today, you look uh, healthier and, uh, I mean, stronger. Appreciate it. Thank you so Thank much. You Thank so you for having me. Thank you very much. Thanks Bye. a lot.